Howdy, everybody. Glad that you guys are joining me on a, what is this? This is a Sunday evening, afternoon, depending on where you are. So uh, we are continuing. Uh, there was a previous one about errors and mistakes. Many of you saw that one. Um, and I wanted, I told you then that I was going to follow up with one more. So this is the second in that same set series. So hopefully you heard the first one. If you didn't, go back and listen to it. It's definitely on the podcast over at cashflowdiarypodcast.com. If you haven't, feel free to go pick that up, download it. It's been downloaded millions, literally millions of times, so that I guess that we're putting something there that's worthwhile, so that's definitely true. As you guys are entering in the room, do me a favor, go ahead and uh, give me your first name, where you're from, how many units you currently have. My name is Jay Massey, CEO of Cashflow Diary. You can see some stats there, right? Uh, and in this particular case, it's kind of funny, because uh, we're going to talk about mistakes, and on those stats screen, you're seeing a whole bunch of successes. <laughs> so you you know the they, they kind of go, it's like you, 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 you can't have rain and sunshine and light and dark. They kind of go together. So that's definitely what we're going to talk about. This was inspired by a number of things. But one of the things is that I was on the phone with one of our newer students who's like, you know, I wish people shared more of their mistakes. And I was like, well, you're in luck. I happened to be doing that at uh, that time. It was later that day. And I was like, OK, cool. So uh, I figured we you see you get an opportunity to see a lot of the positive things from generating lots of leads, writing a book, and owning hundreds of properties, and all this other stuff, cell phone towers, what have you, why not also share some of the less than pleasant things uh, that have also gone on uh, and go on, I should say, because I'm still doing this thing, right, um, as, as well, because I don't want you guys thinking that your career inside the real estate world is going to be free of any of those things. So as I've said before, and I say again, I am watching the chat uh, everywhere. So for those of you on Periscope, feel free to go ahead and click the, tap that screen for those hearts. You also, if you weren't aware, we are still counting up the shares. What does that mean? That means for those of you who would like to win an iPad 9.7 inch, uh, 128 gigabyte iPad Pro, uh, the you all you have to do is share. You, know, you just share the broadcast as many times as you share. We track, we count. You get an entry for each share, and uh, one person shall win a iPad Pro specifically. Let me see if I can. Yep, I got it right here. This one right here. It is space gray. It is in my hands. And I promise you, even though I can hold it with one hand, it is still it is an iPad Pro, not the iPad mini. I know most of you are like iPad mini you can do with one hand. Well, it is what it is. It's an iPad Pro. So if you want it, all you got to do is share on Facebook, uh, invite your followers on Periscope and or Twitter. We will count those on the 28th and then I'll let you know who won on the first. It's going to be pretty exciting, uh, pretty exciting. So many of you um, know that uh, we've been doing real estate investing for a while, and that's one of the things that we like to talk about here at the Cashflow Diary. We also like to talk about helping you build assets that produce cash flow. So hopefully you'll be joining us uh, everywhere that you can find us. And uh, let me see what some of you guys are saying in the chat right now. The confidence credit, Kanisha, I believe I got that right. If so, good evening. Thank you. Kanisha from Alabama. Plan to invest in your first units this year. Good. Uh, can I challenge you, Kanisha, and say how about this quarter as opposed to this year? This year is too much time for that type of a goal. Uh, I would challenge you. I believe you can get it done in the next 13 weeks or less. So that that's very very good. I see a number of people are doing the invite and <laughs> inviting things. So I see Eric and Daishika, and it looks like Juan and Ryan and in a number of you. So I definitely appreciate that. And Chase is here, so uh, I'm glad that you are here as well. You said you like this topic. So uh, that does that mean you like hearing about failures, or you just like the fact that you're going to hopefully learn some things? Uh, through some of the mistakes that have been made in the past. I, I, I'm not really sure what that means at this moment, but that's okay. So let's kind of dive into it. Let me look at my notes. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I have six big areas, and I may be able to con condense some of them. So feel free to ask questions. Type them in. I'm watching, especially for those of you. Oh, let me check Facebook real fast. Sorry. 
Uh, I see Thomas is here and Scott is here. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so make sure that you type them in because when I stop to look at the comments, I want to make sure that we um, th that I'm able to to answer whatever questions you might have. Chase says he's ready to learn from my experiences. That That's a positive way of putting it, my friend. That's a positive way. It's okay if all you want to do is just see me fall on my face. I mean, there's an entire, there's an entire, what, websites and shows about people falling on their face. And that, that's it. That's all we want to do. We just want to watch people fail all day long, make us laugh and feel better about ourselves. So it's all good. It, it is all, all good. So let me see. Number one. Okay, so guys, I've done deals in many different states in the United States. Um, like many at least eight probably nine or if not ten by now uh we're talking apartment buildings i started out with single family houses uh hunt did hundreds of those uh i did mortgages so that was that and we still have some actually where people pay their monthly mortgage to me which is kind of neat uh so i've got that experience so the the single family house experience um and the apartment buildings and cell phone towers and commercial real estate these are all things that i've done and now many of you know uh that we're, we're doing a lot of the whole short-term rental thing well the short-term rental thing is going phenomenally well and many of you know that they, or if you're not already on the list you're going to get on that list soon because the training is going to begin it's going to be coming out soon and you're going to want to <laughs> be the ones to know or be in the know if you will about you know how this is all going to work uh, my point is is having done hundreds of deals and having signed my name a lot of times um, on on HUD documents and escrow papers and all of these things I mean it is I, I've forgotten how much I spend just on notary in an annual in, in, in any year my point is there's a lot of transactional experience across many years and some would even say that I've done decades and not lifetimes worth of experience in a very short period of time and okay that's fine but it also means that I, I wasn't born this way. I mean, I wasn't born knowing everything to know about real estate or business. Uh, and if you think about this and this, if you get nothing else from what I'm going to share with you today, remember this real estate, if someone get ready to write this in real estate investing is a skill, please write that in real estate investing is a skill. All right. And like all skills, the first time you attempt it, guess what? You're probably not that good. Think about it. First time you tried to drive a vehicle, a car, a tractor. <laughs> Maybe the first time you tried to fly an airplane or, or uh, would pilot a boat. The first time you tried a free throw shot, right? The first time you were playing goalie in soccer and you tried to block it. How did that go, right? The first time you tried to do anything. Remember, you don't remember, but remember the first time you tried to walk? Think about that. That wasn't too good either. These are all skills that we've learned or some of you have learned and the one thing if i say if i if you hear nothing else please get this real estate investing business it is a skill and like walking there are it's a necessary skill for daily living an activity for daily living adl if you will there are necessary skills for just being in business all right and one of the most important necessary skills okay so to, to be honest after what i'm going to write say right now you can just turn off your phones your ipads your computers or whatever and go on about your business because you will have gotten the lesson the rest is just going to be a bunch of stories and examples of <laughs> what didn't go so well <laughs> all right but the the number one skill you must develop okay is an ability to fail fast fail forward and fail frequently Failing, learning to fail, having failure events is a skill. If you do not master that, you will not either grow, grow big, or you will not be in the quote unquote business world very, very long. Okay? So just keep that, keep that in the back of your mind because at the end of the day, you know, like I know, one of the things that you're concerned about is failing. Now, if you know that there's someone out there that needs this type of information, you should share it anyway. Yes, you're going to have a shot at the iPad, but you should share it anyway. I'm just saying. All right. My point is, excuse me, when it comes down to it, it, it failing and learning the skill set of it is a necessary skill. 
okay? It's just a necessary skill. So please hear that no matter what happens, okay? All right, um, let's see. Real estate is a skill. Yes, Ryan, exactly. You've mastered. <laughs> Jay says he has mastered uh, the, the art of failing. Okay, that's good. That's good. And understand the, the difference, uh, the, the likely difference between you know, you or us or anyone that we might admire is simply the fact that they may have failed more in that one particular area. They may have failed faster, failed more frequently, and failed more forward than you or I did, period. That's likely the difference, okay? So just keep that in mind. All right, so number one, number one at the top, at the top, this is the number one thing to, to, to hear so that you can learn and grow, learn and grow. When you have a mistake, an error, or you've got vendors, contractors, investors mad at you, remember this, okay? Someone write this in. It's your fault. <laughs> I'll say it again. Remember this. It's your fault. You're like, Jay, no, it isn't. Yes, it is. It's your fault, okay? Here's why I want you to take this position. If you raise capital, they entrusted the funds to you. It's your fault, okay? Maybe it actually isn't your fault, but here's why you wanna have this mental mindset. You put you in the ability to learn because when you start blaming or saying they did something and it's not my fault, how dare you, Mr. Investor, Mr. Contractor, Mr. Tenant, be mad at me? it prevents you from being able to learn. Blame shifting will stop your ability to learn. Here's the, here's the golden nugget. When a, a failure event happens, when something occurs that you did not intend, that's the definition of a mistake, something that occurs that you did not intend, right? Uh, programmers call it a bug, an unintended consequence. Uh, so when something occurs that you did not intend, that is a golden opportunity for you to learn. You just paid full price, full price, no discount for that particular lesson. There's a lesson there. There's a reason why that something happened. For example, there was a time, oh man, five, six, seven years ago now, and where I was working with a partner, all right? I was working with a partner and uh, my job was to raise the capital, which I did. Their job was to select properties that we were going to fix and flip. And I was like, okay, cool that could work out. So I went out there, I raised a hundred thousand dollars. So I had the hundred thousand dollars. Everybody had what they needed. We did the first round of properties. I think that time we bought like six, six properties for a hundred grand. Now this is in Indianapolis in uh, Indiana. And this was a while ago. All right. So what ended up happening? No, we bought seven. Cause I remember we bought seven. We were able to fix up two really, really quickly sold those two. Okay. So hear me, hear me clearly. We sold those two and was able to end up with uh, paying back a significant portion of the money so that we didn't have to owe any more money. And now we had like five free and clear properties, so to speak. And I was like, okay, this is pretty good. And it sounds great. And then we start rehabbing those. Well, here's the deal. As I'm going through the process of, uh, as we're going through the process of the other five, the five that at, at the same time, as we're rehabbing, all these things are going down. Uh, turns out that my contractor uh, decided to uh, have a divorce and nervous breakdown and totally skipped town. Turns out the, if I remember correctly, it was the title company. Uh, <laughs> did not, uh, we did not get title insurance. Now, it, honestly, I know to get title insurance. It's not something that I, I didn't know to do. However, it was not under the purview of my responsibility directly, my responsibility was the hundred thousand dollars in raising that. And that's what I would and that's what I did. And then I said, okay, Mr. Partner, you go do your thing. You're gonna do what you're supposed to do. And everything was going fine until title insurance wasn't obtained and we bought them at auction. Now, some of you may not understand why that's can problematic. But what I'm saying is it's, it's another way of buying something without proving that you actually own it um, or that the person who's selling it has the right to sell it. But you paid for it. <laughs> and that's basically what happened. Then uh, from there, I was introduced to the process known as quiet title. And this is a long process, many, many years in some cases, to where you now have to prove through lawsuit and, and legally that you do own it and give other people who think they might have a right to it 
to challenge your ownership in a public forum. If no one challenges, great. If someone challenges, problem, right? Now, and in this particular case, what ended up happening is that um, the, there was a person who had already been paid off, all right, by the prior person, but that uh, that uh, that that being paid off was not properly recorded. So now we have to go through the process of saying, hey, you said you, we know you've been paid off, but it hasn't been properly recorded. Will you please sign this? Well, if they want to, they can say, well, no, I haven't. You owe me money. Well, guess what they did? Yep, you got it right. So long story short, had to end up paying that. In the same time, I had, I think it was five or six investors with me in this particular deal. They're, they're not receiving any money, guys, during that time. Like none, no money. Were they less than pleased? Yes. Um, what, this is where I learned one of the best lessons was to always pick up the phone. And yes, technically, I didn't, quote unquote, do anything directly wrong. I fulfilled my part of the obligation. Could I have done more uh, uh, checks and balances and made sure that the other side of the equation, the other partners were doing what they were supposed to be doing? Yeah, I, I could have. Uh, is that something we do more of now? Yeah, absolutely. But my point is, it's my fault. I grew the most out of that situation because I adopted the mentality, it's my fault. And I'm going to go figure out what it takes to fix it. One of the things that I've learned is that when things go wrong, oftentimes investors are afraid and contractors and people are just afraid they're not going to get paid. They're not going to get their money back. They're not, they're not, they're not. All of these things that they have ever heard of going to happen has now just happened to them because they believed in you. And I, one of the things that I, I try to do is let my yes be yes, my no be no. I am not perfect at that. I don't know if anyone, any human is. However, when I recognize it, we try to work it out. And that's ultimately what ended up happening is we came to an agreement and we were able to work it out. Um, many of them, some of them still do business with us. Some of them went on to do other industries because they just didn't want the risk of that type of thing happening in real estate again. Okay, totally understood. Yet, that was a reality. It's also a reality check for you. Is that something that you want to if this is going to be part of your business, is that something you want to do? Yes or no. Now, one of the things that may be happening as I talk through these is that you may decide you don't want to do real estate. Completely understood. Makes a ton of sense to me. I, you know, uh, and if that that's completely fine, that's OK. If that's where you end up. All right. Let me see some of the things that you guys have said in the chat room. And let me see. Marcus is here. Black Tie Valet is here. Thank you for joining. Daishika Marcus is keeps joining and rejoining. Somebody is giving me some love over there on Facebook. I totally appreciate that. So uh, I, I'm hoping that this is, is helping you. But remember, someone write this in. It, it's your fault. All right, so let's get to the second, the, the second thing. And before we get there, let me remind everybody, if you haven't already, especially for those of you, uh, if you want to enter for the um, iPad, feel free to do so. All you got to do is share. All right, so... If you just got in here, uh, my name is Jay, CEO of Cash Flow Diary, and at the end of the day, what we're talking about are mistakes. What you see on the screen right now, though, are some of the great things that have happened. We're talking about some of the, the mistakes, errors, and what to do when investors hate you, contractors hate you, you might even hate you um, at the end of the day. And I, I totally understand all of those things is, is really what it comes down to me. All right. Um, number two. The next thing that you want to make sure that you do when this happens. Notice so I'm not saying if. I'm saying when this happens. Uh, you, you don't want to hide. Uh, there is temptation to dodge all communication. At least there was for me. Pick up the phone. Answer the email. Answer the voicemail. Respond. Here, here's the lesson. Respond as quickly as you did before the transaction when you're in the sales process. Period. Respond as quickly as you did before the transaction when you're in the sales process. While you may not have a, a new answer, you may not have anything updated, you might not have anything positive to say, pick up the phone and number one, listen. It is not going to be fun. You are going to, I mean, remember they, they, they're, that you were entrusted with funds and, it, and it, 
It's sad. It hurts to know that something you were a part of isn't going the way that you wanted it to go. And they are expressing their displeasure <laughs> in various words and phrases to you. <laughs> and, and that's okay. You're a part of the situation. You, are, you could become the very object of their hatred and desire. Um, it's unfortunate. Uh, yes, they do. They bear some responsibility. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not saying that. Uh, but I just want you to know that you've got to pick up the phone. Okay? You, you've got to pick it up. You, I know you don't want to return the email. I know you don't want to read the email. I know you don't want to do those things. Who would want to? No one wants to pick up the phone. Everybody wants to pick up the phone and deliver good news. No one wants to pick up the phone and be yelled at. So hopefully that makes some sense. Okay, so that, but that's number two. I'm trying to speed this up. You might even hate you. Yes, Chase, <laughs> you, 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 you can, you definitely might end up in a position where you might hate you. Um, they, they might do, they might threaten you in all kinds of interesting ways. And that, that's part of, you know, them expressing their emotions. One of the things you learn to screen for or try to screen for is I wish there was like some super fail safe, perfect test for emotional stability. Uh, because in one of our podcast episodes, I don't know if you guys actually listened to it, uh, Josh and Lisa Lennon, Josh and Lisa Lennon, he mentioned that everyone in America had an addiction and the addiction was to money. Uh, specifically, he's like, watch what happens if somebody doesn't get their paycheck every two weeks. That's an addictive, he was like, that's a reaction that an addict has. I was like, wow, never thought of it quite like that. Um, and when things go south, with their retirement plan or their whatever it is that they were thinking they were going to do with that those funds it's been delayed now or gone or whatever that is something that's part of the reality okay um that that's just part of the reality and now they're coming to terms with it or at least trying to come to terms with it but you're the you're the one delivering the bad news you're the one who's going to get the first crack at the full vent uh, of their anger uh, and, and it's not going to be fun uh, it's n I don't know that it's ever going to be fun but it's definitely a part of the business awesome okay so number three the next thing the next thing that you need to do is to remember because this one is huge because it will take you out you must remember to protect your confidence yes something bad happened Yes, you you may have actually been the cause. Okay, fine. But even if you weren't or even if you were, doesn't really matter. The point is something bad happened and everyone's blaming you and you uh, are in the middle. Okay, fine. But the question you have to ask yourself is, are you going to go on? You, write this down, are not a failure. You experienced a failure event. You experienced a outcome that was unintended you experience or rather you are experiencing something you did not plan on protect your confidence a lot of these errors or things that don't go well can be made up for depending on how you react to the situation okay how you react to the situation can make or break or save or whatever it's just it's just a situation at the moment uh for example there's, there's, uh, the, sorry, I was trying to figure out which one we were going to go with. Um, when it comes down to a, a very simple case of not overreacting where you can also make some things worse. Uh, there was one time where a, I got a call Monday morning on the way to the bank. I got a call from the property manager. Hey, someone has passed away. A little child has passed away in the unit. I'm like, okay. And at the moment, they also then told me uh, the police are there and the gas inspectors are there. And I was like, uh-oh. They were inspecting the place because if, 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 if we had not done everything that we were supposed to do and those gas pipes were uh, defective or something was wrong with it because of something we neglected, any sort of deferred maintenance or ne negligence, we have a really big issue. Now... Fortunately, in this case, I was uh, thousands of miles away. Uh, it was by phone, so it was un I was unable to make the situation worse. <laughs> However, 
reacting improperly when you're finding out that they're investigating you because they want to they just want to make sure that it's not your fault right you can make that worse fortunately that was one of those situations where we didn't make it worse um and it was determined to be crib death nothing to do with the pipes blah 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 it was still sad that the tenant uh had lost their child but it, it's it was sad now the, what is the reality of that situation how does my investor or contractors get upset with me uh rent was due <laughs> and that and they're asking me what do we want to do i'm like we want to collect rent because that's what we want to do we got to find a nice soft gentle way to do it but it's what we've it's what we've got to do and th that has been uh, one of the many awkward situations, uh, along with like evictions around Christmas, uh, that you know we've had to resolve and deal with in the business of real estate, right? Um, because you might have tenants mad at you. All right, it, it could happen. All right, it well rephrase, it will happen <laughs> at some point. It will happen. All right, uh, you're not going to make every decision perfect, and there's going to be cascading consequences to every decision that you make yes or no and that's one of the things i've come to understand i don't necessarily like that but by owning hundreds of units every one decision i make affects hundreds of people every day every decision now you're like what that sounds a little dramatic jay a decision for example because this is exactly what happened a decision to go watch my daughter play basketball which was fine um as we were driving back, we got into a car accident. Well, the problem with that is that that put me literally out of commission for a couple of months, which means I was in so much pain. Making decisions was very tough. So decisions that needed to be made sometimes got delayed or did not get made. Uh, why? Because I just could not focus because of the pain. The, the lack of those decisions affects the the living environment now fortunately my team comes together and they help and all those types of things but my point is your decisions matter but you got to protect your confidence when those things happen these words like i'm stupid uh, oh my god how could i do that oh my god i can't believe i let that happen those phrases are not going to serve you at this time you must protect your confidence you get to decide what you are going to be known for yes you made a mistake but are you going to prove that you were yes i made a mistake but we're going to fix it and figure it out and stick with it or are you just going to do like some have done cut bait run and there i'm not saying there isn't a time to do that uh, but what i am saying is some people just go ah and run the other direction and let things go up and smoke don't be that person all right um the next one <laughs> Oh, uh, is uh, I, I titled it See It Through to the End, which is kind of relevant uh, to what we were just talking about, is when it comes down to it, the mistakes delay your timetable. For example, uh, it's, let's pretend that w one of the things that happens is you, you're, you're in a situation and you don't actually do, like you, you place the wrong tenant or you don't have a fully qualified tenant, but you think they're qualified. You did everything you know to do, but there are some other things that you didn't know to do or maybe your team didn't bring up, etc. cetera. Um, and what ends up happening is that the wrong tenant gets in there. Now you were planning on paying investors sooner, but you can't, why? Because the tenant didn't pay well now you got to kick that person out and get a new one in and and if they happen to give you trouble during the eviction process you're like cool there's more money that has to be devoted towards getting them removed before you can get control to release the building that's real talk well during that process no one's getting paid but you got it and here's the thing disclose what's going on disclosure will always protect you i, I and if you can begin to record that disclosure, even better. Like, hey, yes, I did tell you on this call, on this date, here's what I said. Uh, in fact, here's the call. <laughs> now, obviously, there are rules about recording both sides of the conversation, all those types of things. Definitely follow them. My point is this. <sighs> See it through to the end. Just because, again, you experienced something that you did not. It's just a roadblock. It's a detour. You thought you were going to go straight. You thought this tenant was going to be great. It didn't work out. Cool. Pick up the pieces, keep moving forward. Okay. <sighs> then there's the ever popular, the one that I know many of you are afraid of. 
it, I, I titled it, They Sued Me, Now What? <laughs> well, the first thing you do is breathe, okay? Um, this, especially in the U.S., is a long process. I'm not saying that you want it, nor do you want to do it. I mean, like an eviction is a lawsuit. It's like, oh, my God, it's going to take forever. Um, again, work out an agreement. Maintain open lines of communication. Talk to the people. They're people at the end of the day. They could be frightened, afraid, scared, embarrassed even. I had that situation once where uh, the investor was like, I... I have to tell my mom, who was a successful investor, what I did, and I'm embarrassed to tell her. And I, I get it. I got it. Um, but we were able to work that through. That was, you know, and the, the point is, you've got to be there to support all the way through. Again, if you're following the don't hide, you're picking up the phone and maintaining communication, if you're disclosing the entire time, if you're protecting your confidence, if you are still going after what it is, the original dream and making those things happen, it's not going to be fun. But you know what it will be? You will be better. You will be better. And that's a good thing. We, we want you to become better. But at the point that they suit, that they might have lost all faith in you, and and that hurts to feel, but that's just the reality of the situation. But it's not the end of the world, and it's okay. Um, at, at the end of the day, there's a, an entire process to that whole thing. I don't completely understand the entire process. Fortunately, I haven't had that much experience with it, where I can break it down. Here's your deadlines and time frames and all that. I, not not my thing. I'm just saying in general breathe my cfo had to teach me like jay just breathe first before you react to all of these messages and emails i mean you'd be surprised how many times you find yourself in a situation because i i, I remember this one where i found myself in a situation where the individual knew that it was cheaper for me to just pay him off way more than i actually owed him than it was for us to go through the lawsuit process. That totally irritated me because he knew that. And so to quote unquote, make him go away for something he should have anyway, I had to pay him more because it was cheaper. And you hear about these things all the time, you know, where you hear about someone suing a company and then the company just settles for a few hundred thousand dollars. Well, because it's cheaper than going through the lawsuit process. This may happen to you. It is not fun. It does not feel great, but it may happen. And if it does, then it does. That's also part of the business. Um, but don't invite it. Don't ask for it. Uh, people will call you all kinds of names in this process. That's probably the thing that irks me the most is we were friends going in. We can be friends coming out, but suddenly now I'm the devil in all other names that you, you can think of. And that becomes very, very hard to deal with. Specifically for me, it's one of the hardest things to deal with. Like a lot of like on my Amazon book reviews, I don't read them because especially the one stars because they send me down this negative spiral and they could send you down this negative spiral for a while i'm just like oh but i have someone else read them because there's good feedback in there from the customer about what we could improve <laughs> so it doesn't mean it doesn't get read it's just or the information doesn't get processed i just might not read it so i developed a strategy so i can protect my confidence but still there's gold in that in, in that information and ultimately that's what you are being given an upset person is some of the best resource for information. So that's the lesson uh, to understand there. Uh, all of these things are things that I've experienced at one time or another. And at the end of the day, I, I just want you to remember real estate investing business is a skill. It's a skill of relationships. It's a skill of understanding finances, capital, and a whole bunch of other things, how they come together to execute a result but it's not the end of your world. It's not the end of your career. It's not the end of your life. It's not the, you know, people may look at you differently, but you just got battle scars now. Uh, people may call you names. People may do, try, especially in today's world of social media, you know, get yelped into oblivion is what my wife always calls it, where a restaurant gets attacked by people who just start giving you tons of bad reviews. 
that 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 is the world uh, that we have or they they try things whatever thing they think might help them to feel better and that's something that I want you to remember should something like this happen to you that's something I just want you to remember it's it's they're hurt and you you are a part of that hurt and as far as they are concerned you're the reason for that hurt now that doesn't mean every investor I've ever worked with hasn't taken some responsibility and realized okay I see what you did. I see it wasn't your fault. Those types of things. Those people are out there. Um, and they're really hard to screen for, but you try <laughs> and do the best you can. Uh, all I'm trying to say to you is that th these things do happen. And when they happen, don't freak out. All right? Just don't freak out. All right. Hopefully, this has been helpful. I'm going to look at some of... Let me see. I see Scott is here. That's awesome. Uh, Felicia is here. Felicia invited. Tim is here. Excellent. How are you guys doing? Uh, what I do, I want to give you guys a couple of minutes. Uh, if you want, you can ask some questions. Otherwise, um, we're, we're going to jet on out of here because that's all I've got. But remember, um, for those of you on Periscope, just invite your followers, share the broadcast uh, on Periscope or Facebook or Twitter, and you'll be able uh, to have an entry for the uh, iPad Pro. Don't forget, if you missed the prior episode of <laughs> Mistakes, you can go to cashflowdiarypodcast.com, pick that up, and occasionally we do leave our replays up at cashflowdiary.tv. Let me see, who is here? It's engraved for me already? What's engraved for you? Oh, <laughs> you think the iPad's engraved for you. Got it. She's just claiming it's, uh, hey, if you're the, you have, I believe, you have faithfully shared, so um, you you have definitely faithfully shared the broadcast. So uh, let me ask this question for everyone still watching. Um, it, it Did this help you understand, A, some of the things that, that, that could go wrong, or more importantly, make you feel better about some of the mistakes or errors or things that have could happen to you uh, in any way? Did it help you relax in any way whatsoever, knowing that these things have happened to, to me or to others? Uh, if so, just give me the emoji girl hand up uh, in the chat. That way I can see that. <laughs> the, no? Yes, Alden just decided to share. Thank you, Alden. I totally appreciate that, uh, for sure. Totally appreciate those things. Because the, the goal here today is simply to, to help and share and, and let you guys know that these things, well, they happen. It is what it is. Um, I've got some new stuff coming uh, in terms of uh, short-term related, short-term rental related stuff. So if you haven't followed already, you definitely want to do so. For those of you on Facebook, make sure you hit the live notifications button for Periscope. Hit the little Perry dude over in the corner. Uh, then tap my name, tap follow, because you're going to want to pick that up as well. Dashika, thank you. I totally appreciate your support there. And uh, we will uh, be broadcasting a few, obviously a few more times this week because the 28th is approaching. And I want to make sure that you guys get an opportunity to share as many times as you'd like to. Uh, but in the meantime, know that the training for short-term rentals is coming. Just go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash coming soon. Cashflowdiary.com forward slash coming soon. Pretty excited about all the things that are happening there. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun talking to you guys today. I definitely look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.